Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending September the 17th, 2021. Well, this is uh, going to mark uh, two in, uh, weeks in a row, uh, down weeks in a row for the uh, Russell 3000, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. Uh, it'll be the third week in a row of down moves for the mid caps and small caps, but all around, uh, we're just getting out of overbought territory, really, on a weekly basis for the uh, for the major indexes. So um, you know we're we're, we're looking at a, a couple of percentage points here, and really some technical analysis you can look at. Maybe another another one percent uh, uh, before you know there we get into bounce territory. We saw the S&P 500 move down today and test support, its near-term support, and bounced yet again. Now, that's a, that's a couple of times it's done that this week. So, um, you know, the markets aren't really weak necessarily as much as they are, are getting along in the tooth at this point. And the COVID thing, you know, just keeps running longer and longer uh, because of the vaccination problems primarily. Um, uh, evidence overwhelmingly still still uh, lends its support towards uh, getting the vaccines. Uh, there's little scientific evidence uh, to the contrary that I found. Uh, anyway, uh, not not to uh, not to wax long on on that notion, but uh, the thing is is that your supply chain disruption continues to cause some troubles, and then. Um, uh, uh, inflation yeah, that that translates into some inflation. Now next week we have the uh, the Fed uh, going into its two day meeting and they they will come out with um, a report uh, again probably on tapering. We see the ten years moving into the mid one thirties again, probably in my view and in, in, in anticipation of uh, of that report uh, next week. Um, you know, it, it's probably going to scoot up a little bit. I, I, see, I saw some uh, in higher inflation numbers here and there, but look, the uh, we're, we're like I said earlier, we're just now getting uh, on a weekly basis just out of overbought territory. So, from a technical standpoint, a two to three percent move or so is still good. Uh, good news uh, overall. Uh, there's reason for for bullishness. We're still up on the on the on the right side of the grass for the most part. Uh, in in the uh, indexes, and of course, you know there's still value plays. This is opening up value plays in small and mid caps, uh, uh, you know, and spotty uh, plays, arguably in the S and P uh, larger cap moves. But uh, this is a healthy healthy move. We're still somewhat bullish, although the market generally now has pulled even on a put call ratio. You got about uh, is he even Stephen fifty fifty on a put call ratio as of uh, today, Friday, uh, September the seventeenth, twenty twenty one, midday. And uh, also, we're seeing um, uh, sentiment for the first time in a year, almost uh, it missing it by a week or so, but almost, almost uh, so definitely September uh, 2020 was the last time that there, there was much, as much bearish sentiment uh, as there is right now. Now, realize uh, if we're looking at history, yeah, the September doldrums and the end of the fiscal year, et cetera, et cetera, but look at this way. Um, we have uh, the S&P 500 six out of ten times uh, closing higher in September than it opened, and as well as the Russell 3000 uh, closing six out of ten times uh, higher than it opened. The Nasdaq uh, not so much, probably more profit taking <laughs> in the Nasdaq uh, recent years since 2017. 40 uh, percent of the time uh, closed higher than uh, than it opened all right now switching gears just for a sec uh, let's let's translate this uh, these returns so you've had a couple of weeks of, of pullback here what if we looked at uh, at that in in and extrapolate into the longer term and 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 applied that towards our portfolios and analyzed our portfolios with pullbacks in a longer term if we're if if we're talking about down moves, okay. So sequence of returns risk is kind of what I'm uh, getting to here, and so our our portfolio is pulling back uh, slightly this week, maybe a little bit. And uh, it, the thing is, is that as long as we're not drawing money out of those on on, on in addition to the draw market drawdowns, then we're in a position to take the bounce and then and then recover. From, from these moves. That's the difference between being in accumulation fade leading up to retirement 
and then the drawdown phase while in retirement, okay? And it's this is where the sequence of return risk rears its ugly head is that when we're taking drawdowns on top of negative movements of, because of the marketplace, now that's when we get our, our, our portfolios hits that they from which they may never recover. And that is what creates sequence of return risk and, and that and, uh, it's, it's what creates uh, uh, the negative impacts of sequence of return risk and that's what ends up destroying our portfolios and giving us problems long term uh, is because uh, we're having, if you don't have other buckets to pull money from, if you're getting hit by the markets and getting hit by life and you're having to pull money out at the same time, that's, that creates some problems. So we delve into this topic in detail in our upcoming class um, the changing world of retirement planning and this is at uh, Forsyth Conference Center at the Lanier Technical College in Cumming, Georgia just off exits 13, 3410 Ronald Reagan Boulevard. Our, our September the 28th and October the 5th class is full, okay? That one's, that was, we maxed out on that one. We still have a limited space available. I don't know how long this is going to probably close up in the next day or two, but we still have enough limited space uh, to accept a couple more couples, okay, or or a, a few more individuals, but uh, but it's less than a handful, okay, so that's that's a limited time. Those are filling up. That class is going to be September the 30th and October the 7th, so we do, we do uh, there's two-part classes, but we do an extended analysis of how to mitigate sequence of return risk, how to reduce it, and how to, how to turn it uh, on its head and make it work for us. Uh, at the best that you can in terms of negative, uh, when, when you have negative market conditions as you're going through there. Now, not to say that at all that's what we're facing right now in the markets. I think the markets are still very, very bullish long term, but I'm just extrapolating from the short term. What if those were, instead of three weeks, or if those were three years, two to three years, and in the meantime, you're having to pull money out? So we go through this uh, this discussion. It's a, it's a really great discussion. Everybody's going to love it, uh, and you're going to come out of way uh, with a lot more information, a lot more uh, ability to uh, steal yourself against the marketplace as time goes by. All right, that'll do it for this week. I'll see you next time.